Hi everybody, and thank you very much for keep for still being join joining us for a good number of weeks already. Today I have to tell you in advance because we will tell you a little a little more as we reach the ending of this program that today we are reaching or we are wrapping up the second season of our uh, series of Willow Singing. Today we are devoting or we are giving a good number of examples of the greatest zarzuela numbers, uh, most uh, better known as romances. But before we proceed to that, you know that we like uh, to thank uh, people who have been following us mostly in the podcasts of this program. And today we would like to thank in particular to people of Thailand. As I was sharing the statistics with Katya, we were really, 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 really surprised to see how far we have reached in the world. And of course, we never thought of reaching Thailand with our program. So we would like to share our deepest appreciation for Thailand. And for that purpose, uh, we did a little research on what, well, of course, of course, there is a good number of things that Thailand has brought to us in the world in the world uh, in the world of art and we would like to share with you because i am i am almost certain that very few people very few people know it that one of the greatest poets writers is known as sun thorn pu of course the pronunciation in english is not the way it should sound in thailand but this is how it has been uh, it's acceptedly written into english so sun thorn pu who was uh, one of the iconic writers of this country, is also the author of the longest uh, epic poem ever written, known under the name of Fra Afai Mani. I have been reading about uh, the story that is told in the, uh, in the Fra Afai Mani, and I have to, to tell you that I, uh, what I found is, find is something so extraordinary. Uh, I mean, you, you really have to be a genius to be able to, to write uh, this, uh, this poem. I think I don't have at hand the length of this poem, but let me tell you, oh yes, I do, is over 600,000 words that spans into 132 samuthais, which are called books, and it's the world's world's second largest poem written by a single poet. With that sound, that being said, the last number that I would like to share with you is that it uh, it is a uh, 25,098 couplets of poetry. So just think of the extension of this. Uh, for for people to get a comparison of the very beautiful story of uh, mythical uh, characters in the story told in the Fra Fai Mani, they say that it can be, be compared to the Odyssey written by Homer. So just think of the quality of the of the story, the length of the story that is being told in here. So for today, I am uh, uh, we are going to leave the this very beautiful image, uh, this photo taken uh, by the seas that surround Thailand, uh, because these two characters that we have here make reference to this beautiful epopeic uh, poet by Sun Thorn Pu. So we will leave it there just to remind us that we today would like to thank people in Thailand. Would you like to add something else to to, to this message, Katya? Sure. Um, we've been uh, singing some special music at the beginning of our programs to thank to, to the public of certain places. Uh, unfortunately, um, in, in my case, for example, in, in university, we are not um, in touch with um, this kind of music, you know, uh, you are talked by opera and, and this um, Western music, but I think that we should take and give ourselves the chance to approach to this beautiful culture. Um, somebody's told once upon a time that there are more things that we ignore than those that we know. And I totally agree. You know, you can't um, know about everything or you can't know any um, everything. But I think that 
uh, life is uh, length enough to to give us that chance to to approach to new experiences absolutely so with that uh with our deepest appreciation to people of thailand uh listening and following to us uh we would like to start today's program by telling you as i told you a couple of minutes ago that today we are bringing to you numbers from the zarzuela zarzuela which is the spanish musical gender or, or at least to what now we call the spain because you know as the history of 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 Europe and of this country has changed uh, throughout the centuries, but now is known as Spain because the zarzuela started very early. It is around five centuries almost. It is almost as old as the earliest opera, but in the case of the zarzuela, it has this uh, regional touch. This sounds very particular that we understand. Not only it is spoken in Spanish, but also the, the stories, the characteristics, everything reflects to what Spain is. And this is part of what we will be sharing with you today. Uh, we recall and we will share a few anecdotes with you as we make progress. But since it's been already six minutes that we started and you, li and you know that we like opening with music and, and we like it moreover when we have Katia sing at the beginning. Yes. So uh, we will have her sing among the many beautiful pieces written for the voice of soprano she has selected a few numbers for today so tell us what is it that you are going to be singing to open the program today i will sing <laughs> <laughs> la canción del ruiseñor um as as a soprano i will speak a little bit more i promise but just a little bit uh as a soprano i i have to say that i have the bliss of singing uh, every kind of nightingale that exists. Okay. <laughs> That's beautiful and funny. So um, I will start with this uh, nightingale song uh, from Las Musas Latinas. Okay, and let's remember that sopranos can sing to almost anything and make a stratospheric colorotier coloratura out of anything that may appear like a good excuse to show off. So with, with that in mind, uh, let's listen to one of these pieces as she just presented, La Canción del Ruiseñor. Canta tú.
this is a, a great example of uh, in one in one hand of a coloratura piece, and on the other hand of how the these pieces called romanzas are, are in the Spanish gender. You, you don't feel the Italian touch in it. You feel something very different. And uh, to, to, uh, how many how many songs are there that uh, sopranos sing to birds? <laughs> this canción oh, del Señor, uh, canción del Señor, is it is also in Doña Francisquita, if I remember well. Uh, mm. Oliver Rondel, uh, that is another song. Salabieri for that. by Labief. Yeah. I already sang a part here. Yeah, mm -hmm. I think I think you did. Yeah, there is another one so. by another Slavic composer that it escaped in my mind. Well, there is a number of, of parts where sopranos sings to birds, sing to birds, and this is one of them. And uh, Maybe to start recalling it uh, or making a couple of anecdotes from our sites, let me be, uh, first start by, by, start by telling you that, uh, may, well, people, you may be, or you are, I'm, I'm certain that you're aware that Mexico was conquered by the Spanish some five centuries, a little more than that. No, around five centuries ago. And uh, that's, the, that's the reason why our na native language is now Spanish. But putting that thing apart, uh, it was in the past century, around the 1900s, the early 1900s, that many many artists from Spain came to Mexico to continue uh, the promotion of this Spanish gender called zarzuela. One of the most known is the family of the very well-known tenor Placido Domingo, uh, Pepita Mil and his father Placido Domingo, his father, were two of the greatest promoters of zarzuela in Mexico, and there are a good number of singers that, in fact, in Mexico started started working in their zarzuela company. So that's how they. I'm not sure of the expression in English. I, I'm not sure if you know it, Katia. Hacer tablas, you know, the number of presentations that you go on stage is what is called in Spanish hacer tablas. It's like making experience or. Yeah, something like that. So many, many, many well-known singers in Mexico uh, did that. Unfortunately, there are, there is not now any active uh, zarzuela company in Mexico, but I have had a chance of witnessing a couple of them in the last 20 years, around 20 years. Keep in mind that I am very young, so that's why 20 years is a good number <laughs> to give an example. <laughs> But uh, th th I'm born, <laughs> <laughs> so if I am 25, I was attending those performances when I was five. So that's fair enough. <laughs> and I will share some of those anecdotes to you. But why don't you why don't you start by you telling us, Katya, if you recall, what was the first zarzuela that you were in touch with? Oh, it was um, Il Barbero. Ah, el barberillo de lavapiés. Yeah. El barberillo de lavapiés, I think. Yes, because of you. Me? You asked me to sing uh, oh, this song. I, I forgot the name. Um, about La Paloma. Mm. Como nací en la calle de la Paloma, ese nombre me dieron de niña en broma, y como vuelo alegre de calle en calle, el nombre de Paloma sigue no dando. Pero al ver que les pora, na, na. And today I am not singing anything about a mezzo or a soprano, so I will leave it there. <laughs> but that's one of the one that's one of the songs that I really like a lot. The song, the the entrance of Paloma. But now moving to, I have a, I think I have confessed or shared with you in the past that unfortunately to tenors. You know that in opera, the the good guy and the guy with the most attractive roles is always the tenor. In the zarzuela is the opposite. It is the baritone. The baritone takes always the best pieces of music, the most attractive. He's always the kind, the gentleman, the true lover, and the tenor is always a traitor. <laughs> so... Emil 
opera and outside. <laughs> <laughs> there are many who fit, uh, who fit that role, I have to agree. And uh, that's the reason why many tenors take the baritone uh, romances, and not only because they are more beautiful, but also remember that the baritones in Sarsuela are not like the baritones in the opera with wider, powerful voices. The baritones in, uh, in Sarsuela tend, not all of them, but they tend to be more like a light tenor with a good central voice. That's why many tenors there into the, into the baritone uh, roles. The thing is that tenors start doing what they do and many times the, the original scores for baritones are now not very well known because now they on, people can only think of the versions for the tenors. So with that being said, I have a good number of pieces that I would like to share with you and maybe we would I would like to start with you with one of the recently known pieces uh, known as Amor Vida de Mi Vida. Uh, I have a good friend who loves this uh, uh, this romanza. The only problem is that the, the only version that he knows is Placido Domingos. So he thinks that his this amor vida de mi vida is written for a tenor, and has in his mind the well it is sung by Placido Domingo, which is not the case. So let's try. I will be sharing with you a piece of this. It is from the zarzuela known as Maravilla. Amor vida de mi vida is the, the pain of a guy for a woman again. Rafael is suffering so much for the love of the girl who happens to be Emilia. So Rafael is suffering for Emilia. And this is the song called Amor vida de mi vida. And... Uh, Adios dijiste, se va mi vida, llorar quisiste por un amor que hay que olvidar, te vas riendo y yo me muero. Mi dolor es saber que no puedes llorar. Amor, vida de mi vida, qué triste es decirse adiós. Te llevas la juventud de este querer sin redención, amor, que por el camino no puedes volver atrás. Te ríes cuando sientes deseos de llorar y pensar que te amé con alma y vida y hoy te quieres burlar de mi dolor este amor que soñé no lo puedo callar fueron falsas palabras mentiste mil veces tu amor moja Amor, vida de mi vida, qué triste es decirse adiós, te llevas la juventud de este querer sin redención, amor, que por el camino no puedes volver atrás, 
te ríes cuando sientes deseos de llorar. Adiós, mi bien. Adiós. And so that is the sad song of Amor, Vida de mi Vida. And before I forget, as I always criticize how tenors and baritones mostly and sometimes sopranos wrap up the arias with a long, unwritten, anti-musical note. In the case of Zarzuela, most of the endings have that long note. As opposite to the opera, where there is not usually that long. In the case of Zarzuela, it usually is. So, as long as possible. As long as possible, as long as you want, as you want to show off, or as long as the pianist does not get tired of waiting for you, or the orchestra director starts killing you with the eyes, telling you, "Come on, we have to wrap that up." And uh, that that would be the case for the zarzuela romanzas. Now, tell me, uh, Katia, what are the if you ever include in your recitals in your presentations. Sarsuela, is there a favorite that you have added or that you la would like to add as part of the program? Mm. I have a confession to make. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> um, I have to say that Sarsuela was not my favorite um, dinner of music. Uh, but my teacher is like a great fan of this, so she um, made me approach as you did. <laughs> and she gave me these beautiful songs, uh, for example, uh, Me Llaman La Primorosa, they call me the gorgeous lady. And I think that uh, this is one of my favorite pieces of, of music, um, talking about Zarzuela, because I, I like um, the, the, the playing um, character of this. Um, like, like you said, uh, you don't feel like Italian or French music at all. Um, it is um, spicy, it is uh, playful, and passionate, but not as Italian. It is different, you know. Uh, I think that it has to do with this um, Arabic influence, and um, it, it feels like um, the word does not exist, but it feels like gypsier, <laughs> you know. If you could use a new word for this, I think that I would choose this one. Um, you know, it's. Um, it's like sexy, but playful, but light and spicy. So I think it's it's very beautiful music. So I have to appreciate the the opportunity of being obligated to sing Sarsuela because I think that if this um, didn't happen, I would be missing a very important part of singing. Oh, I, ha I have to do something. I have to unmute myself, otherwise you will not hear me. Yeah, you can read lips, so I'm going to repeat myself. Uh, I was asking if you're actually proceeding with sharing with us Me Llaman La Primorosa. Or... Sure, I will. And uh, because maybe if you are going to proceed with that, I would like to, sh uh, to confirm what you actually said. I think that Me Llaman La Primorosa is one of the most splendid, uh, light, attractive, funny, because if you speak Spanish, of course, you understand more of it. And as Katia said, one, one way of saying Primorosa, I am that, I mean, come on, I am, 
I am the one. You are falling for me. Everybody's falling for me. So just think. It's a kind of museta cuando me envo because everybody looks at me and everybody wants me. Yeah, exactly. That's what I was going to share. The, this song uh, takes us to to the role of museta in cuando me envo because you know I know that as I walk on the street, everybody's looking at me. Everybody would like to have a chance of having a crush with me, but I am the one who decides here. So I will have fun with whoever I want and that's how it's going to happen and uh, the style that as you said maybe we could we should we could be allowed to say gypsier because the, the touch of the Spanish music this type of Spanish music is very interesting in the say in the way that uh, the singer plays that this playing with the voice and with the music and with the content so I, I think that you would really enjoy singing that on stage I, I feel that people would be very attracted to that yeah okay so if so. you agree let's listen to Katia's approach to this aria sorry romanza <laughs> Me llamo la primorosa, la niña de los amores, por mis ojos tentadores, y esta cara de gracia, por mis labios encendidos, como los rojos abeles, no los hombres buscan mieles, Buscan mieles, todos los hombres buscan mieles en abejas convertidos. ¿Por qué tengo tez morena que es color de la hermosura? Y es gallarda mi figura, y es gallarda mi figura, como vara de azucena. Oh, <laughs> 
Of course, by the end, when we have heard La Primorosa wrapping up her romanza, the, all the stage has gone crazy after all those ornaments. And of course, expecting the high, highest note at the end. That is usually... What is written on the score? What is the... It is written a C. But of course, you never do that, of course. <laughs> uh it's not enough, so I sing a knee. Yeah, that's where. That's what I thought that you well, always um, go for no, a knee. I, I, I correct. Uh, well, you um, sing before the the trino, and that part where you say, that's the C. Ah, okay. For the very end, it's written B A. But of course, I sing. B E. Yeah, of course. <laughs> of course, you would never <laughs> keep, it, keep yourself with that. Yeah. And, and moreover, <laughs> and also, uh, as we have, uh, as I have shared with you in the past, that I don't like when singers extend for much longer. Uh, that is the case uh, for the zarzuela. There are many high notes that are not written, but that people or the audience is expecting. Provided that it's the yeah, it's a must. So if the singer leaves the stage without providing that splendid note, people will say, oh, she she could have no <laughs> go, go sing something else because that's not your repertory. Because also, <laughs> yeah. as, as I was telling you, that it is considered for some people less serious and it is somehow less serious than the opera. I, uh, most, if not all, because not all, but most of the librettos are tell lighter stories. They are, of course, tragic love stories, but not as tragic as Otello, killing this demon, or <laughs> those horrible things happening on stage. Not that far. So it is allowed that people sing uh, longer notes, higher notes, sometimes adding uh, words to this uh, to to the to their characters because now we will also mention that sarsuelas are also spoken they are spoken and sung just the same way as the sing, sing spiel in Germany it is a similar case that is closer to what we are talking about and that's why and to the operetta also that's why these three genders that are not not considered as big and as serious as opera are lighter and funnier but also we need to talk about the technical complexity and as you just heard in the two uh, romances that Katya has shared no it's not as easy as people think if you take into account these two romances they are a very good challenge of course i i was gonna mention that uh these genres are uh, known as min minor genres Minor says who? I mean, try, try to sing this. <laughs> and it's not easier than Cuando Menbo or O oh, Mio Babino Caro. Not at all. Um, yes, it, it, it is um, not as um, complicated, musically speaking, as an opera where there is music. The, the whole time and everything is sung, but uh, virtuosistically, um, it's the same. It, it really is. These two examples that you have shared are perfect to demonstrate that. Uh, and, and now, I have to 
<laughs> and you have two more to come. Yeah, I have that in mind. And people keep that in mind. There are two more to come. Uh, but we, we also have to say that zarzuela can also be funny. And from a zarzuela called La Canción del Olvido, which I absolutely love. La Canción del Olvido is lovely in every sense. It has several pieces, as it is the case of the song Junto al Puente de la Peña. The bad guy no, no. is singing this thing Junto al Puente de la Peña by Maestro Serrano. And uh, even though he's the bad guy called Leonelo, the, the content of how he, he flirts women is... <clears throat> Let's say he's a very attractive bad character. You you feel like you should be hating him for playing with women, but his okay. his his music is so lovely that you cannot actually hate him. <laughs> and so of course he had to be a baritone. If no. he had if he had been a tenor, he would have been hated. And uh, you see me that today I am reading with this. I also would like to share with you people. These are these are also part of my treasures, the collection of the zarzuela books that I have for all the tesituras. I really love these pieces of music put together because I was sharing with you Katia, and I hope that is not the case in your country, but mo most likely it is. To get uh, shit music from opera is hard, and getting it from Mexican music, French music, or this one zarzuela is close to impossible so that's why i appreciate these uh books as you can see on the screen okay so go for let's go for junto al puente de la peña unfortunately as as my voice has been wider has become wider i cannot make the falsetto part as a woman because there is a, a, a part here that has to be falseteada and that i can no longer do i <laughs> can when I was younger, I could, I cannot anymore. I tried to do it and sound more like Dalila than <laughs> as a believable uh, female falsetteada voice. But I will, I will see how I can somehow change the tone of my voice in that part. Okay. Let me see if I think I do have part of the music, and maybe you can barely hear it because I the the music is also so 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 lovely that. This is this is one of the cases when the music enough can be played and the singer may not even sing anything and people would even care. And I think it goes there. It should be starting any second now. Junto al puente de la peña, por la noche la encontré. Y su guante chiquitito le cayó a los pies. Por su reto me lanzaba, recogí su guante yo. Y en su mano bella puse un beso de pasión. Porque al verla no se puede resistir la tentación. Por las calles solitarias hemos dado la seguí. Esquivando las malicias de la gente ruin, y al acercarme galante mis respetos le ofrecí. Perdonad, por favor, atended, que decís que os adoro. Callad, no decírmelo así, y escuchando su voz yo pensé. Qué infeliz, qué infeliz, qué infeliz, mujer primorosa clavellina que brindas el amor. Yo soy caminante que al pasar arranca las hojas de la flor y sigue adelante sin recordar tu amor. A la dueña que la sirve con dinero soborné y admirada de mi rasgo saludó y se fue y al decir la cortesana caballero que yo espero a mi galán en mi fiel acero puse mano sin dudar que mi espada se enardece ante la sombra de un rival 
convencida y conquistada, en mi brazo se apoyó, y escuchaba mis embustes, llena de ilusión, al llevarla a su palacio, mis finezas repetí, dulce bien, me engañáis, no acostumbro a mentir, volveréis, como no, ya veré si fingís, y dejándola ya de su amor, me reí, me reí, me reí. Mujer, primorosa clavellina, que brindas el amor. Yo soy caminante que al pasar arranca las hojas de la flor y sigue adelante sin recordar tu amor. So, as you can see, it is a very, a very lovely song, a very funny song of a guy who just goes around the world flirting women and uh, making them believe that he's going to love her when he's actually not going to do that. He's just playing with them. And that is part of the character of many characters in the Zarzuela are, and that is one of the reasons why it is so difficult to sing on stage because you really have to make it believable. And I have shared with many people, and I think many actors would agree to that. Ah, because there is another thing. It is important that you are a singer with the zarzuela, but it is also very important that you are a very good actor. Because just imagine a soprano that has high notes, just as Katia shared in Me Llama La Primorosa, but she's stiff, serious, like squared. Me llaman! Like, <laughs> like she, she's singing. No. No, you can't sing um, the Queen of the Night without moving, and everybody was gonna applause anyhow. But but you can do that in Sarsuela because it is more like um, like a theater work. So you you have to add so much more. Absolutely. And then... I would like to add. Oh, sure, forgive sure. me. Go ahead, sure. That a double challenge. Uh, when you face to a uh, score, um, is that there is so much more text and singing those phrases uh, with so much uh, with so much text and um, a, a very good line and a very good uh, impostation. Well, it is a very hard and tough work. You really need to have a solid technique and and a very good impostation to make clear all your text and don't change the, the, the impostation and the color with so many words and letters. <laughs> And now that you mention it, it is also very important that not only it has long test, but we have also to say that most of the romances in the Zarzuela really add to the story. Opposed to, to let's take O Mio Babino Caro, that O oh, Mio Babino Caro, that we all, all we need to know is that he loves, she loves her grandfather. That's basically what she does. So it really doesn't have anything that we don't know yet. It is not going to change the, the way of the story. Not It's just for the, you know, for the spotlight to be on the diva and to be applauded for several minutes. And that's pretty much the role of O Mio Babino Caro. But in here, you which usually add value to the character. You do something to the story in this case we are adding to the to the uh, character of uh, leonello who happens to be this guy i was telling you who likes to play with women now after this romance uh, you you really think this guy is a miserable guy how he happens to be playing with every woman he encounters right but you have to do it believable you have to really have a good impostation and you have to also have a very good diction so that can people can understand what you're actually saying because uh, i have seen a couple of zarzuelas when there are also subtitles <laughs> even if you're a spanish speaker and the, the zarzuelas in spanish you need oh subtitles God. because you really can't understand what the singers are singing and that is so horrible <laughs> so, sad. <laughs> it's so sad but let's continue because you want to leave it but we're already three quarters of the program 
how how time has flown so fast so now let's go for another romance that katya is going to be sharing with us what is it going to be now uh noche hermosa from katyuska um this is a special song because it has my name in in some way right and it is a very lovely song it's a very beautiful that song. people people yes. may think yes. that it is also easy to sing but it it requires a perfect intonation perfect legato and a, a good number of things that if you don't do it well the song will not do it <laughs> let's listen yeah. to katia sharing with us the noche hermosa hermosa de jazmines perfumada dile al eco que repita mis palabras noche hermosa que de luna estás nevada llévale As you can see, the, the Sarsuela can have also uh, good examples of what, if we have to compare it to opera, the, the aria for a lyric soprano. This could be a closer example, uh, but it still has this touch of Spanish music. No, no way it is closer to Italian or even French, uh, even, even that the French compositions are usually melodic, this wouldn't be the case. It has its own personality, and that's what makes Sarsuela so special. And I think that it is also very nice that you found a song that actually has part of your name in it. <laughs> so <laughs> you may feel proud of it, right? <laughs> it's beautiful. <laughs> Yeah, and that, it, it, uh, this melody leaves us with uh, with a very interesting sensation of like pe peacefulness. Things are quiet. Everything is going to be better. Something like that. And uh, if you agree, I would like to share with you one of the first romances that I heard. It was in the case of uh, Jose Carreras. I heard this song, he's known as the Cancion Húngara, or the Hungarian song, also known as Canta Mendigo Errante, uh, from the Zarzuela Alma de Dios, 
also by Maestro Jose Serrano, and it is the case in the Sarsuela, and it is with uh, with other genders that there are very iconic composers. It is the case for Sarsuela. Maestro Serrano wrote a good number of very famous Sarsuelas, and this Canta Mendigo Errante is a can be more than sad, it is sort of a melancholic song, and I think that it fits somehow the mood of what Katia just shared. And so let's give a chance to this beautiful song known as Canta Mendigo Errante, or also known as the Cancion Húngara, or Hungarian song, of a guy who misses his land and the good number of things that came with it. Canta mendi guerrante, cantos de tu niñez, ya que no canta patria, volverá. Ya que no canta patria, volverá a ver. Amores, patria querida, llevan de los dos canciones mi triste vida, vida de inquieto y eterno andar que alegro solo. Con mi cantar, cantaba cabondo, dos miserias por el mundo, que tu canción quizá el viento llevará. Hasta la aldea donde tu amor está. Dos miserias por el mundo que tu canción quizá el viento llevará. Hasta la aldea donde tu santo cariño está. Es caminar siempre errante, mi triste sino. Sin encontrar un descanso en mi camino. Ave perdida, nunca he de hallar un ido amante donde cantar, cantar vagabundo. Dos miserias por el mundo que tu 
canción quizá el viento llevará hasta la aldea donde tu amor está. So opposite to other versions that go for a rapping longer uh, ending that goes donde tu amor está. For as long as your lungs can keep it, I think that it is better when it wraps like that. Donde tu amor está. Because it's a quieter song, so I think that it go it fits more the mood of the piece, at least from my perspective. So, uh, and this is a good example of what Katia was sharing with you. The texts in Sarsuela are amazingly long. <laughs> they seem to continue like oh, yeah. forever. <laughs> you're always saying something and you're... And uh, maybe uh, taking advantage that Katia is a singing professor herself, she can tell you how difficult it is to prepare a student to get ready of every position of the throat and all the vocal apparatus to make it work. <laughs> yeah, you have to study vowel um, by vowel. Then you vocalize the, 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 the piece, for example. Uh, oh, and when you have found finally the place and the hymn station, then you start to, to uh, place your vowel in that place. And then you can sing and everybody understands. And everybody's happy. <laughs> Except the singer. <laughs> Because the yeah. singer has to, has to care about... It the... could be worse. It could be worse. Ah, yeah, wow. it, it can always be worse, for sure, for sure. <laughs> but but let's keep in mind that you have to... Uh, uh, what we were sharing with you earlier, that in, given that the zarzuela is more like the theater with music, but really theater, theater with music, besides really being theater. a good actor, it's very if people don't understand what you're actually singing and that you are always in character. So if you're a natural, stiff person, it is a good reason why many opera singers do not go to their, or just take one of the pieces from the zarzuela and get away with it. But to actually perform in a zarzuela would be much more difficult than that. Of course. For example, uh, in, in opera, uh, there are many areas where you repeat a single phrase once and again, or there are melismas, you know, the same vowel uh, uh, passing by different notes. But here you are, um, you are talking, singing. Yeah. So it's really complicated. And in order, uh, there is room for only two more romances today, as we are reaching the limit of our the duration of our program. So it is usually one and one, as you can see, we usually, I, uh, it's Katia then me, then Katia then me, but I am going to sing it now because we want Katia to wrap up the program. So that's why I will continue. <laughs> and actually it is going to be a tenor area that is also very well known, known as La Roca Fría del Calvario. People who know me know that I am not a religious person, but I, re I recall uh, listening a tenor in, uh, in a presentation in one of the major uh, uh, universities in Mexico called the Instituto Politecnico Nacional at a very famous auditorium of that institution. And I recall that he, he had sung already for over an hour and he decided to close the program with this one. But this one is also very long. And I was asking myself, how could he be singing for so long and wrapping up with one of the most difficult and longest areas for a tenor? But it is very beautiful, very beautiful uh, romanza. So let's listen to La Roca Fría del Calvario. The zarzuela is known as La Dolorosa. And uh, I, also, I have also had the chance of watching uh, La Dolorosa complete in one of the uh, recordings that you can watch on TV. And I really recall that it was very a very beautiful the complete is not very long. The, the complete sarsuela is very beautiful. 
and the melody that sort of um I, I forgot the name of what is called in the Wagnerian music uh, the, 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 light, the light motif, not exactly a light motif, but La Dolorosa has some aspect of these uh, of these notes that give you an idea of what is going to be developed throughout the complete zarzuela. So that would be La Roca Fría del Calvario. La Roca Fría del Calvario se oculta en el gran ove, por un sendero solitario. La Virgen Madre sobe, camina, y es su cara morena, flor de azucena, que ha perdido el color. Y en su pecho lacerado se han clavado las espinas del dolor. Su cuerpo vacilante se dobla al peso de la pena. Pero sigue adelante, camina y sus labios de hielo besan al suelo donde brota una flor en cada gota de sangre derramada por Jesús el Redentor. Sombra peregrina en blanca del dolor hecho luz. Camina, camina ligera que el hijo la espera. Muerto en la cruz. Desde una loma del sendero, la Virgen caminante ve la silueta del madero. Y al hijo agonizante y llora su callado tormento con un lamento que no puede vencer. Es el grito desgarrado arrancado a su carne de mujer. Divina estrella sobre la huella del humano dolor. Triste camina, camina llorosa la madre dolorosa de so that is the case for La Roca Fría del Calvario. As you notice, it is very long with many, 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 many <laughs> lots of words, too much text. And that's why this is one of the most famous romances for tenors. And uh, as we are approaching, before, uh, before we listen to the fourth participation of Kat in today's program, we would like to share that today we are wrapping up the second season of our program where we wanted to share some of the most popular some because if we continued with this season we would be it would take years there are way too many well-known areas but i think this is a good time to wrap up this second cycle of the most popular areas because in september we are taking a couple of weeks off and in september 
you will see that we are going to reach one of our favorite this is this third season is going to be a favorite of us because we will be sharing with you our favorite arias and romances and songs we have given space to space to the most uh, known or favorites of everyone's but now it's time for us to be egocentric and share with you what are our favorite arias that will be our season three starting in september and we are wrapping up wrapping up today's cycle with what is it that go, you are going to wrap up the cycle with katya i'll be a nightingale again <laughs> Oh, let, let me let me pretend I'm surprised. Oh. Oh, really? Oh, what is it going to be? <laughs> You're not seeing a nightingale. Whoa. <laughs> 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 that doesn't happen. <laughs> no, nobody will believe that it's going to happen again in the same program. Nobody was expecting for this. <laughs> yeah, nobody was expecting that to happen. So if you haven't had enough of coloratura and ornaments, we still have one more to come. And that's what is going to be now, <laughs> Katya. <laughs> Okay, let's go ahead. Okay, let's go ahead with her rendition of this. Hope you recognize it and we will be talking to you in September for the third season. Thank you. Yeah, el pájaro decía. 